the real reason why I'm making this video, obviously, is because I really look forward to reading the comment section, which I think is going to be an absolute fucking poetry. It's going to be a war zone, right? The last time I made a video like that was titled something like Blender Killer with a question mark. The comment section went fucking apeshit, okay? It was a genius. So, you know, Josh and I had a field day with this one. Now, in all seriousness, though, I do think that sub D days are limited and new tools gonna come up and already coming up to replace it. So let's talk about it. Now, when I'm talking about sub D being dead, I'm not talking about sculpting. You, you can't touch sculpting. Sculpting is a very artistic way of modeling. And, you know, especially when you're doing it in ZBrush, but I've, I've seen some sculptors doing some proper damage in Blender. You can't touch this shit, okay? Now, what I do want to talk about is modeling using Sub-D, modeling organic surfaces using Sub-D by extruding polygons, right? Or retopologizing. Now, retopologizing, I think, is going to be the first thing that's going to go because it's a manual labor, right? If you talk to any pro concept artist working, you know, on, on games in, in whatever studios, unless they're very tiny, right? Retopologizing has been outsourced. I was watching a recently interview with the guys who designed the Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West machines. Each machine was outsourced in terms of retopologizing and 30 people were working on retopologizing, right? Just outsourced to another studio. Okay, because it's manual labor. But yeah, we, we yeah, leave that up to our outsource partners uh, as we, yeah, they have pretty big teams that can work uh, simultaneously on one machine. So like uh, sometimes like up to 30 people work on one machine cleaning uh, during the cleaning process. So yeah, and we don't have that amount of people uh, that we can put on it and uh, don't have the resources to actually clean them also in-house uh, at Gorilla. Right, um, there was another interview, I don't remember the name, I was watching with a really um, amazing sculptor, he was a zebra sculptor, and they asked him like, so, you know, how do you handle quads? He's like, I don't give a fuck. Because he doesn't, he's a, he's a fucking concept, he's a concept artist, why the fuck would he care about the quads? He just models this shit, and then he handles over to, you know, outsource this, right, to some people who can, you know, retopologize it, right? I'm not belittling people who retopologize shit, but what I'm saying is it's a manual labor, like data entry, okay? You don't have to think about the shape, you don't have to design. You're not an artist, you're just a craftsman, right? You're using quads to overlay them over something that exists. That's not fucking art, that's not bullshit about it, okay? So eventually we're gonna have a program, probably driven by AI, where you specify where you want to place, you know, edge loops, how you want to direct the edge flow, and it's going to fucking connect everything, you know, using quads. Because when you're retopologizing stuff, right, the most important thing is to specify where the edge, edge loop is going to go. And then you connect the edge loops with, you know, quads. So when you specify where you want the edge loops, then the rest can be done automatically, just like QuadroMesure does. The only problem is QuadroMesure, right, for hard surface in models, like, you know, with, with defined angles, is that it has a problem with defining edge loops, which is essential for sub-D, correct? So that's the only problem. But once this is sorted, retopologizing is gone. It's no, no longer a job. Because AI and tools, you know, machines going to be always cheaper than human labor, okay? Also, it's fucking time-consuming. Retopologizing takes a lot of fucking time. Just like polishing meshes in ZBrush. Right? So when you when you sculpt something, then you need to polish it to, you know, to, to clean up the mesh before you're going to retopologize it, right? Because you need to have a clean mesh. That takes a lot of time, too. That's also outsourced. Because, again, manual labor. You need to know the tools, but you, need to don't, you don't need to know the design. Do you see what I mean? But modeling in Sub-D, I think it's actually gone now. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, and I'm going to get a lot of heat in comments for this one, and qu quite frankly, I don't give a flying fuck. Now, I do think that plasticity is very close to replacing Sub-D modeling, especially with XNARPs. Because XNARPs, you know, like when you have curves, when you have lofts and shit, all is peachy, but XNARPs are fucking a game changer, okay? They, they completely change the dynamics of modeling. You know, this the reason why a Rhino is so fucking expensive and the XNARP plugin costs $400 is because it's goddamn good. It saves so much time. The algorithm is so complex 
and can connect surfaces in such an in, you know intricate way and a perfect create a perfect shading that is just no competition okay it's mathematically correct shading how can you beat this shit up with manually moving polygons you can't do that right and also it's super quick like i was modeling this car for fun okay it's kind of like a sci-fi concept i didn't have blueprints i didn't have any references i just doodled it right and i don't do cars at all so you know it, it's it's just that easy right it's very intuitive very artistic and really fucking quick and you know you can approach stuff from different angles if it doesn't work so and you know it's just been introduced and it's already so good so i think there's a huge future uh for this and eventually um sub d is just gonna be too time consuming and too ineffective in order to be you know to be used in a in the industry i think now don't get me wrong you're still gonna need sub d for retopologizing because you will need quad mesh at least for now for you know vfx you know gaming and all animations etc when you do need quad mesh but again mostly you're gonna be using let's say some kind of a program to read apologize automatically right you're not gonna be creating mesh in fucking sub d because it takes too much time i was recording the course recently for sub d for blender bros and i was using all the add-ons i you know we we use right so hard ups box cutter machine tools mesh machine cable rater, all of them like fucking i was using like i don't know 10 add-ons in this course and the only reason why the course, the modeling section, is less than four hours, less than four hours, right, is because I was using, using add-ons. If I didn't use add-ons, I think it would take at least twice as long. So now imagine that add-ons for sub-D do similar thing as XNARPs do for add-ons when you're using sub-D. So XNARPs workflow is going to be faster than using add-ons for sub-D in Blender. And that's why I think it's going to get replaced. If not now, very soon. It just eventually, you know, it's, it's just going to be more time efficient, right? It is already time more time efficient. So it, it's it's really not going to take long, okay? But, you know, Sub-D will not die yet. But what I meant by the title, and this is why I also said I'm looking forward to comment section because it's going to be a lot of morons commenting, Sub-D will never die. Sub-D is so good. Because you're always going to need something in the fucking industry. There's a lot of some kind of fucking moron who's going to say some shit like this, you know, because they're kind of so heated and emotional about the title, they cannot fucking pass, you know, see through it and look beyond the fingers, you know, on the entire forest. They just fucking look at the fingers, you know what I mean? Fucking Muppets. But anyway, that's what I think, guys. And um, I'm not selling you plasticity because I don't give a flying fuck what you're using. I'm just telling you what I think. And that's the reason why our next course is going to be for plasticity, because I think it's amazing. Especially when you're going to pair it with Blender. Because now with the Blender bridge, you know, the live Blender bridge, you can do some serious damage, man. You, you can create some really sick organic shit really quickly and then bring it to Blender and, you know, even uh, change things, boolean things, add bevels, you know, clean up stuff, whatever, retopologize it using the bridge as well. And this retopologizing feature is going to get better, better, and better. I have a video on it, by the way, so go ahead and watch it. But, you know, if you combine these two together, it's it's really powerful combo, man. Um, you know, Blender with add-ons and, and plasticity, you got some proper powerhouse, you know, um, tools to work. And now actually creating organic surfaces is fun. Because let me tell you, sub D is not fun. If you find sub D fun, there's something fucking fundamentally wrong with you. Because it's not artistic, okay? Artists, you know, we think differently, right? We like to flow. We have to go with the flow, right? Surf on the fucking water. We don't want to compute the fucking height of waves, do you know what I mean? I just want to fucking go with it. Yeah, I don't give a shit how fucking high the wave is. I just want to enjoy the ride, yeah? That's how plasticity feels when you're modeling in it, right? That's how add-ons feel when you're modeling in Blender. If I had to model without add-ons in Blender, I'd be fucking suicidal. Because this shit is so fucking clunky. Not to mention that recently, they fucking up all these tools. Like, you know, auto smooth fucking um, how to install add-ons, modifier menu, all this shit. I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but, you know, they're high on fumes or some shit. You know, it's Amsterdam, right? I don't know what the fuck they're smoking, but must be good. So anyway, that's my beef with what you call them, Sub-D. And I do think that we've seen the last, day of, last days of Sub-D. 
and eventually we're gonna have some way more powerful workflows like this one like x knobs and people are gonna be migrating massively you know we have a mass migration to plasticity from cut software like fusion and moi because honestly fusion I, I was modeling in fusion i was modeling in moi this shit is so fucking clunky it's just unreal like fusion has a terrible ui it's fucking awful right it looks like it's some shit from 1990. Uh, Moi is really slow. Okay, it's really slow. And and I, you know, it's it's maybe th these softwares are better maybe for like precision modeling when you're a designer and you need some specific measurements. Go and fucking use Moi and Fusion 360. But if you're an artist, I would stay the fuck away from them and go with plasticity because it's actually fucking more fun. You know, feels very intuitive, it kind of flowy, it's really, it's it genuinely fun. It's like playing with Lego bricks when you're a kid, you know what I mean? So that that's cool. It, it That's how I feel, again, when I'm modeling in Blender using add-ons, because I, I know I have this power, right? In the back of my head, I know what I can do, how fast I can go. So when I watch these videos to these poor motherfuckers, you know, slaving in vanilla, uh, vanilla Blender, I feel fucking sorry because they waste so much fucking time, it's unreal. And remember, time is the essence. It's the only fucking thing you cannot buy more of, right? You, you got 24 hours in a fucking day and it's up to you what you're going to do with it. So if you want to be pig-headed and, and stick to, you know, some stupid fucking old belief system that, you know, earth up, earth up, do it like good luck because you're going to get eaten alive by the people who want to be, you know, who want to move fast, yeah? And that's, and the world doesn't give a fuck about your emotions, doesn't give a fuck about you at all. What doesn't give a fuck about you? That's the first thing, right? Doesn't give a flying fuck. So it's up to you to be at the front, right? Because the world's just going to keep moving. So you're either going to get left behind or you're going to fucking jump on a train and keep going, yeah? I genuinely look forward to the comment section because I think it's going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of pissed off people and divided opinions and discussions about nothing important because that's what, you know, a lot of people like to do. They sit at home have a weekend, you know, the weekend people, when they have off on, on weekend, what the fuck is a weekend? If you want to achieve something, fuck weekends. Get your fucking ass, you know, in gear and work. Do you know what I mean? So all this fucking bullshit about, you know, all, you know, I don't know, healthy lifestyle, balanced lifestyle. What the fuck is wrong with these people? I just want to fucking work. I want to get shit done before I fucking die, you know. I want to wanna, wanna do some damage. I want to leave some mark. Right, not to fucking take a weekend off and fucking go with my you know girlfriend or wife fucking window shopping. What the fuck is this shit about? So you know I I don't give a fuck about people like that at all. Okay, I have zero fucking shits or respect for people like this. So these comments don't faze me. But I'm talking to those of you who actually fucking have brains and IQ on a certain level to understand what I'm saying, right? So you know consider that and look into this because honestly that's where the future is. I'm telling you right now. And a lot of artists are, are saying the same thing. And boy, oh boy, this shit is fast, okay? So anyway, that's it for me on the Sub D. Thanks for watching. Cheers. See you next one.